All right, I'm gonna have a lot of the same thing over and over going on for a while, which is probably gonna be boring to watch. So I'm gonna tell some tales of Jamie. <sighs> Someone recently asked me about track and field, if I could uh, say some stuff about my track and field career from long ago. So I'm gonna tell you about my hardest race. Now out of victories, losses, high school, college, and club, just out, out of everything. This was my hardest race. So this was my last year of high school. The beginning of the year, <clears throat> you know, I'm on the track team, and this other guy on the track team, Rob, comes up to me and says, hey, you have to run against the guy who runs a 148. Now I ran the 800 meters, and my, my best at the time was a minute 53. Now the difference between a minute and 53 seconds and 148 is five seconds. It doesn't sound like a huge deal until you realize how far a person runs in five seconds. That's like, it's like 30 or 40 meters. That guy's like 30 or 40 meters ahead of me. Like not, not even close. Like he could, he could finish the race, slow down, look back, see a couple other people, and I'm still way back behind those other people. Like, not even close. Maybe you could gain, like, in a, in a good year of training, you might gain a second or two on your time. But five seconds is just, just, ugh. So anyway, I'm like, no, no, dude, that's, no. And I'm just, like, trying to, uh. He's like, no, no, seriously. And I was like, uh oh because I know what this means to a Jamie if this is true and sure enough I, I went and I at this point it doesn't really matter if it's true because he's told me this and I've got it in my head that I'm gonna have to beat someone who runs this kind of time so anyway I find out that it is actually true there's this guy I'm gonna have to run against who is way faster than me and he's gonna he's just gonna win the provincial championships no problem I mean he's just gonna jog around the track 800 meters like it's nothing and, and win no problem and I'm like, well, I can't just let that happen. I'm going to I'm going to go for it. And I'm either going to win the race or I'm going to I'm going to have like catastrophic failure in the attempt. I'm not going to die or anything, but I'm just going for it all out, putting all my eggs in the basket. I'm all in. So, you know, the track season starts and we're doing the usual stuff, and I'm like, this isn't going to do it. If I'm on this, on this track, you know, this, this path, I'm not, I'm not going to get to where I need to be to be able to beat this guy. So I started training by myself, not with the team, which didn't go over super well. And my coach and I had a really good uh, relationship. But I was just like, I'm sorry. You know, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to do what I need to do doing this training. I need to do something different. And I'm going to use everything you taught me over the last few years. And I'm just going to max it out. I'm really sorry I'm not running with the team. But uh, just just have a little faith in me. I'm, I'll come and tell you what I'm doing. You know. Anyway. So I started this ridiculous training program where I was running two times a day, every day. No days off. And it was... I had this... The schedule was something like, in the morning, I would do run, one running workout. Then at lunch, I would do weights. After school, I would do another running workout. This was all by myself, not with anyone else, just me and a clock. And the, the workouts went like this. I'd do something super fast, like fast sprints. Then I'd do something medium, then I'd do something a little bit longer distance. Not too long distance, because I was doing middle distance. And then... So that was three different things I would just keep cycling through. But then in addition to that, I would do one workout with, with normal weight. The next workout would be with negative weight, which would mean I would be running downhill. Uh, which is, is, is really kind of freaky, but you can get used to going faster. So like on days when I was doing a sprint and it was a downhill, I would be running like eight or nine second hundred meters going downhill just trying not to fall over like the speed I couldn't generate myself 
but just getting used to it, getting the coordination to be able to go faster without my body freaking out. And then, so it would be no weight, minus weight, no weight, and then a heavy day. And the heavy day was like anywhere between 30 and 60 pounds of extra stuff on me, and I would wear that for the workout. So, eh, just as an example of a workout, oh, and, and when, I, when I started doing this, because I was doing a workout before school, and this wasn't just a chintzy little quick thing, it was like a serious thing, I started going to bed at 8 o'clock. I'd go to bed at 8 o'clock, get up at 5. And I'd get up at 5, so here's an example of one day. One day that stands out in my mind. I don't know why this particular day does. But I got up at 5. I already had my running shorts on, put on my shirt, put on my shoes, got a drink of water, ran out the door. Didn't stop running for 5 kilometers. And I would run pretty fast to the track. I would run like 5 minute miles or close to it to the track. And then I would hop the fence because this wasn't a track I was allowed to go to. And then... This particular day I'm thinking of, I did four or um, eight 400 meters. So on an outdoor track, it's one lap. So I did eight one laps, and they're all they're all pretty fast, like as fast as I can basically do them. So by the end of the the workout, uh, I'm lay I, I, I'm laying on the ground. It's still dark. The sun's just starting to come up, and this is why I remember this one particular day. I just remember laying there on the track. <gasps> just like sucking wind like crazy just my whole body is just numb because I've been you know um, I was looking up at the sky and the, the light was coming in and I was just thinking if I can keep this up for the next few months the next four six months whatever it is I don't remember I have a chance right now if I'm on a path where I might be able to do it I might be able to win and you might be thinking Jamie, why, why would you put so much effort into this? What's what's the point? What are you getting out of it? Well, you know, I'm not getting paid or anything, but what I'm getting out of it is experience. You know, like in a video game, you play and you get experience and you get stronger. Well, in real life, the same thing happens. I'm like, here's a challenge that I have a chance to beat, and if I beat this challenge, or even if I don't beat this challenge, everything I'm doing to try to beat it is going to make me physically, mentally, spiritually stronger. So anyway... I catch my wind back from the uh, the end of the workout. Ah, there was one part I should I should add to this, which was a really important thing for this training schedule I had. At the end of every single workout, the moment I finish my last running thing, as soon as I remember, I have to get to the nearest 100 meter start line and run 100 meters as fast as I can. So totally exhausted, zero rest just finish the thing, okay, get to the line and run 100 meters. And, uh, you know, the first the first couple weeks of this, I'd, try, I'd be trying to run the 100 meters and just just totally jello-legged and just uh, barely moving, uh, just trying as hard as I can. But after a few weeks, my body got used to this and I would always mentally not prepare myself for it. I'd be like, I'm not, I'm not doing, I'm just, I'm just going to max out at the end of the workout. And then this 100 meters is a separate thing. But my body and my mind or whatever would, would start getting used to it, and I could always run 100 meters at like 11 seconds-ish. At, even at the end of the workout, totally wiped out. And I figured this would, this would knock off the last 100 meters of the race, so I only had to run a 700 meter race instead of an 800 meter race. Because this last 100 meters, I'm building it into myself automatic. Anyway, the end of the workout, I get up and I uh, run home. Now running to the workout is hard. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Then I do the workout and everything's fast. It's hard, it's hard. Go, go. And then running back home from the workout, the only, the only requirement I gave to myself was that I couldn't stop. I have to keep running no matter what. Speed doesn't matter, but I got to keep my feet going. Keep my feet going. Not walking. Keep running. Uh, man, those were so hard to get home. By the time I, you know, by the time I was like a mile from home, I'd be up to speed and going. But the first couple miles on the way home from the track workout, it was so hard to keep my legs running. But I did this every day, every morning before school, every day after school, and at lunch I would do weights. 
for the for the entire year I mean I could get into details of like workouts where I got to a point where I was just ready to crack but I was like no no I'm either I'm either making it or I'm catastrophic failure I'm going you know like I remember one workout where I was doing 200 meters 200 meter sprints downhill and I found a good spot to do this it was a few miles away from the house perfect distance anyway and just one day I'm going and I'm like no I can go faster I'm not maxing out because I'm holding back because I don't want to do a face plant but I know that if I rationally if I go fast enough the wind coming back at me I'll be going so fast the wind will hold me up and I just let go it's like Wah! I just running super fast downhill and sure enough the wind held me up kept me from face planting. now stopping at the at the bottom was pretty hard but that was part of that was part of the whole thing I was just training to just get ready for everything anyway so the year goes on it gets it gets close to uh, the provincial championships and first it's the city championships then some regional then a bigger regional and then the the provincial championships and one of my uh oh and during this time i was alienating everyone people were trying to like say things like jamie you gotta you gotta like slow down you know i i've i've you know this would be like other teachers and stuff i i see you running in the morning when i'm driving to school and you just look like you're you're, you're pushing too hard and you're gonna hurt yourself you know you gotta have a social life and i'm just like okay thanks I wouldn't talk to anyone. I'm like, no, this is a goal, and I'm doing it. And one of the one of the gym teachers who was good friends with my track coach uh, came up to me one day and pulled me aside from gym class and said, you know, your coach has really put a lot of effort into you guys, and it would just be a real shame if you know you you just didn't come through, and you know you just it seems like you just you're just slacking off and. You know, you don't care anymore. And I know there are other things going on in your life. And maybe you're thinking about other things. Just because he knew I wasn't showing up to track practice. So he thought I was just giving up and you know, doing other things. So, I mean, I, I basically just told him, look, um, I'm taking this really seriously, actually. Um, let me just show you in a month. So, I don't think he was very satisfied with that. But, you know, I got out of the conversation, however. And I would report back to my track coach every now and then. But basically, I was just in this zone in my head, in my body, and I was, like, just maxing out constantly. So, uh... And I was in amazing shape when I got to the city championships. You know, I went... You know, I won that easily. No problem. I mean, that, that wouldn't have been hard anyway. And then the regionals, I won that. And then the next regionals, I won that, no problem. And then the provincial championships come along. And of course everyone's expecting this this guy who runs a 148 to win. And uh, I mean, no one thinks this weird Jamie guy is going to win, even though I had won the year before. Anyway, this because we were in diff different age categories the year before, but then we're in the same age category this year. Um, so I was in the same uh, qualifying heat as this guy. And I was so nervous before before the qualifying heat. You know, the, the heats basically work uh, this way. You've got three three separate races, um, and then the top two people in each of the three races plus the next two fastest times go to the final. So as long as I'm in the, the, the top two in the thing, no problem. Which is not going to be a difficult thing for me, I know this. But I'm in the same heat as this guy who's supposed to win. And for this entire year, I'd won every race, every every qualifying, every everything, every every 800 meters I won, I ran, I'd won or won and broken a record. But here I am, and I'm like, I can't I can't blow myself out to beat this guy in the heat. I just need to to relax, make sure I come in first or second. He's going to do the same. And it was such a weird thing for me. I was like. I was just talking and talking like before the race because I was nervous and I was just like I just got to get this nervous out. So my friend there who's on the team, I was telling him about Smurfs and I don't know. I don't. I just, I just remember just blabbing, 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 just talking, talking because I was like 
I somehow need to deal with the fact that I'm going to try to do something totally different than I've been doing. So anyway, I run the heat. Me and this guy just, you know, leave everyone else behind. And we come around the first lap. It's a two-lap race. We come around the first lap. We're easily ahead of everyone. Just kind of, I don't remember who was, I think he was just ahead of me and I was just on his shoulder and we were just running. And we come around to the finish line. We just cross it together. I don't know who, who won that or... I don't know who won that. He was probably thinking the same thing I was, which was basically, let me get through this without using too much energy because this other guy looks scary. And he think he got the idea that I was there to be serious. Um, so then a couple hours later is the finals. And uh, before the finals, I wasn't nervous at all. All the nervousness I had before was gone because I was like, I know exactly what I'm doing here. I'm going all out. I'm either going to win or catastrophic, catastrophic failure, and that's the only two options. I'm either winning or not finishing the race. So we get on the starting line. Whoa, that was lots of, whoa. Oh, just thinking about it, it's like, whoa. Anyway, we get on the starting line. Oh, I also had like long blonde bleach blonde hair and like a ponytail out of the top of my head at the time just because that's what I was doing I was also only 155 pounds because during that school year I was working night shifts somewhere and then going to school and doing all these track workouts and I had lost like 40 pounds basically during that year uh, I didn't look super skinny because I was just ripped but I, I was I was very very lean and kind of skinny, uh, but just like all shoulders and calves and butt cheeks, and just uh, did not look weak at all. Anyway, I get to the start line. This guy's on the lane beside me, and there's another guy, you know, and then all the other people. And uh, starts pouring rain. The wind's coming. It's pouring rain. So before the race even starts, there's like an inch of water on the track. Doesn't matter to me at all feel the rain on me, I can feel the coolness, and I'm just like, it, it means nothing to me. But I was also, on another side of my brain, I was thinking, oh, this is, this is good, this will keep me cool. So we get to the start line, because the guy says, on your marks. So you get to the start line. Set. Pew! I've done this like a hundred times. <laughs> just start going. Get a good start. Get up to speed. Now... I still hadn't exactly like worked out how I was going to win this race, uh, so I was just kind of going by instinct. And my instinct was telling me, conserve, 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 conserve everything. Just keep going at a, go at a good pace, but don't, don't use much, just conserve as much as possible. And what ended up happening is the first lap, this other guy who was supposed to win this race, I'm just going to call him 148, 148 goes out ahead. Another guy went with him. I wasn't worried about the other guy. Because I knew he, he wouldn't keep that pace. But 148 is out ahead. And we come around uh, the end of the first lap. And I was behind by like 15 meters. I was way behind. But some, I mean, my instincts were just telling me this is what I need to do. Um, and everyone else was behind me. And there's these two guys ahead. So I cross where the, where the finish line is, going into the second lap, the last lap. And halfway through that corner, uh, just everything, everything froze for a minute. I just remember, everything is frozen. Obviously it didn't actually freeze, but this was just when the switch happened in my head. And, uh, you know, I was just letting my instincts take care of it. Just telling my instincts, you got to keep me on this path to win. I don't care what it is, just do it. And then my instincts turned my brain on and said, Brain, go now. You either come first or you do not finish the race. And at that point, I just hit it. Now, I'd never, I've never like broken out with that much of the race to go. Usually it's like a last 100 meter sprint. Maybe 200 meters sprint if you really want to push it. But this was like 350 meters to go, maybe even a little more. 
And I was just like, okay. And I cranked up the engine like to full speed. Just like I was just running a 400 meter, not even like an 800 meter. So 150 meters later, I blow by these two guys that are that were ahead of me. Like they were standing still. They're just whoosh. And I'm just chugging along. <laughs> and so at this point, there's 200 meters left. And I've just left these guys in the dust. I've got good speed. And I'm like, this is the point where my, where my last 100 meters kicked in. You know, during that whole year of training, I'd been programming myself to run a last 100 meters just out of nowhere super fast. But this came up at 200 meters to go for whatever reason because I'd used up everything else. So I cranked out this last, this really fast last corner. And when I got to the end of that corner, I was way ahead of the other guys. And looking down this 100 meter straightaway, and that's when I just kind of came into reality. Out of, out of my instincts, out of everything, it's just like, here you are, Jamie, Psh, dumped into the world. And I was like, oh crap, why do you dump me here? No, the finish line's over there. Don't dump me here. I'm not ready yet. I have to cross the finish line before I'm before I'm back. But it was like, no, I just gotta just gotta keep going, keep going, keep the speed, keep the speed. And I was just thinking, like, I know I'm slowing down. No matter what I do, there's no way I can maintain the speed. There is no acceleration. All there is is try to keep the speed as much as I can. And uh, I was basically coasting, but just coasting as fast as I could. So I get to 50 meters to go, and I know these guys are catching up to me at this point. And I can't feel my legs anymore. With about 50 meters to go, my legs were gone. I knew they were still there, and I knew they were still doing something, because I wasn't on the ground. But I was kind of glancing down, making sure they were still moving. And because I couldn't feel them anymore, I started locking out my knees when I hit the ground. Because I knew if I, if I hit the ground bent leg at all, I was just gonna fall on the ground. So I'm like pogo sticking, kind of like all on my, my legs and locking them out as I hit, which is not a good thing. Don't do that to your legs. But for 50 meters, I can handle I'm not. I know I'm not gonna damage anything. And then I got to the finish line and just, like my legs were just gone. I face planted in like two inches of water, hydroplane, rolled over, just like just completely gone like every everything in my body was was turned to, to jelloey concrete but my eyes were still open and I could look and I saw the second guy coming across the finish line so I knew I'd made it actually no you know what I wasn't even sure yet at that point because I couldn't feel anything and I remember a lady a lady came, one of the officials came and, and said, okay, you have to get up now. And I was like, I'm trying to. I mean, I must have sounded like I was drunk. Because, like, my, I couldn't even work my face at the time. I'm like, I'm trying to get up. <laughs> so she tries to help me up. She gets me up to, a, like, a squatting position. And I try to stand up and just fell right over again. And, she, and she's like, oh, something's wrong with this guy. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, I'm okay. I'm just, my, I used all my stuff. <laughs> so anyway. Another couple minutes goes by and I finally manage to get to my feet and kind of hobble off the track. I say to one of the other guys, I think I won, didn't I? And that's when I knew I won because he said, yeah, dude, you won. I was like, oh, good, because I wasn't sure. Anyway, then I kind of stumbled over just trying to get my legs moving again. Not really registering that I had this whole year of stuff with this goal. I just did it. and It was amazing. Uh, so I, I stumble over to where the fence is and I see my coach on the other side. And he just comes over up to the fence and puts his hand on the fence. And I put my hand against his on the fence. And he just looked at me with this look like, you know, but like a little while ago, he'd been really concerned that, uh, you know, maybe I was just not, not giving a crap anymore or maybe I was doing some crazy stuff that didn't make sense or maybe I just lost my mind or something. But now, when I looked at him through that fence, he was just like, yeah, man, yeah, I got it, got it. And, uh, yeah, that was a really cool moment for me. And, uh, you know, and I was just looking at him saying, 
we didn't say anything out loud, but I was just like, yeah, all the stuff you taught me, I put it, I put it all in there, hundred percent, and it worked. All the stuff you taught me worked. Yeah. So anyway, then I went back to, uh, back up to the stands where our team was. Yeah, and everyone's like, yeah, hey, Jeremy, you did it. And this guy, Rob, the guy at the beginning of the year who told me, hey, you got to run against this guy who ran a 148. <laughs> you know, he was just kind of poking a little fun, but knew there was no way I could beat it. He comes up and he just looks at me and goes, dude, you are God. And it was a very silly, ridiculous, cheesy thing to say. But coming from this guy who I was very competitive with, I was just like, whoa. That was like massive respect. Massive respect from someone I have a lot of respect from, and that was pretty awesome. Now, before the race, my mom had come up to me and said, I don't know, she was, she was saying some stuff about the race, and I, I, I gave some, I kind of gave some indication that I was planning to win, and she said, well, you're not planning to win, are you? And I could see this look of concern that she was really concerned that I would, that I thought maybe I could win and my heart would be broken. And I just closed my mouth and walked away from her. And then, so after the race, I was like, how's that, mama? Are you going to win? Ooh, and she, she didn't take it particularly well, but I thought it was hilarious. Anyway, so then we go back to school. And, uh, oh, no, then, then we went, then we left there. And uh, I ended up somewhere 50 miles from home. There, I was staying for a couple days, and you know I was kind of recuperating a little bit, just visiting other family. And then I was like, ah, I think I'm ready to go home. But I was 50 miles from home. Now, for the for the previous like eight months or whatever, I'd been super careful not to do anything stupid or crazy. And at this point in time, I was like, ah, track season's over. I don't need to conserve anything. I don't need to be ready for anything. I'm in amazing shape. I'm gonna go run 50 miles home. So I grabbed my my two medals because we we also uh, I also ran the four by four and we came second I think. Anyway, I grabbed my medals, grabbed a few bucks for for drinks along the way, locked the door behind me so I couldn't turn back and ran 50 miles home. That that trip is a whole other story. But anyway, I got home in time to go to the school dance that evening, and uh, my girlfriend at the time was very happy to see me, but a little concerned that I could barely stand up. Man, if you ever run 50 miles, it's hard to stand for like a week. <clears throat> and I ran it fast too, because I was in really good shape, so it was like six minute miles. But I was not ready for that distance. But I mean, anyway, it was fine. Of course, my girlfriend, like, a week later said, you never do anything romantic. And I was like, I ran 50 miles! to come meet you at the dance for high school. I wouldn't have made it if I didn't run that. I would have come the next day when I had a ride. And she's like, did you, did you actually run it just to go to the dance? I was like, no, of course I didn't run just to go to the dance, but it counts. Anyway, so the next day at school, I went to the gym, gym teacher's office and there was the gym teacher who was very concerned a few months ago, several months ago that I was, uh, you know, kind of slacking off and not respecting my coach. and uh, I just walked in there with this big smile on my face. And he had this big smile on my face. And I took out my gold medal and threw it on his disc. And I said, how's that? And he just was, he just laughed. Ah, and that was it. That was it. Ah, that was, that was a great year. Uh, I mean, I did, I did other things that year. But man, that was a great year of just figuring out what can be done when you have a, a goal that's near impossible and you just say, I'm, I'm going all in. I'm either going to make it happen or I'm going to catastrophically fail on the way. And even if I'd gotten 90% of the way there, even if at that, at that point in the race where my legs were given out, if I had fallen on my face and did a face plant and not finished the race, it still would have been an amazing whole thing. But you know, it was nice to actually win the race at the end. So that's, that's one of my uh, track and field stories. That was the hardest race I ever did.
the only race where I couldn't stand up after.